Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our fourth uh, webinar for the Building Smart UAE chapter. Um, in this webinar, we will have two parts. The first part, Engineer Noura bin Haidar from Dubai Municipality will give us about only five minute update for the recent activities of Dubai Municipality and the Building Smart chapter relating to applying PIM in Dubai Municipality. And this five minutes, we hope that other people will join. Then we will start our uh, topic for today with engineer Bilal Diredi. So engineer Nora, if you are ready, just let me know so we can start. And Anna, please, if you would like also to add something to the introduction and don't forget the recording, please. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, is my screen showing? Yes, please go ahead. Okay, good morning everyone. I'm here to give you a quick update about the latest progress in the Dubai BIM project and the Building Smart UAE chapter. Uh, first of all, our participation in JITEX, we have launched a new service. No, to simplify the process of the checking and the uh, quality and compliance of the BIM model, with building regulation, we launched a free self-checking service, which allows the consultant to run automatic code compliance check in one step. Moreover, the, using the service uh, does not need re registration or going through the whole uh, steps to create a permit application. You can scan the QR code to access the service. As well, we have participated in the sixth uh, ME BIM Summit. The Middle East leading BIM focused summit features the industry brightest mind in an all new format that is sure to educate and inform even the most educated of construction professionals. Myself, Engineer Noura bin Haider, and Dr. Ali has participated to talk about the latest progress in Dubai BIM project focusing on the Dubai e-submission platform and Dubai BIM Unified Standards. The first version of the Dubai BIM Standards and the BIM e-submission platform are already completed and ready for testing by selected consultants for feedback and improvements. And if any of you would like to be a part of the testing phase, please uh, inform us and you can scan the QR code to uh, enter the platform. The purpose of the unified standards is to help consultants and guide them with the process of the sub submission of building permits application and by using constant BIM standards, BIM adoption, and development of an in innovative submission portal for BIM e submission and automatic code compliance checking creates an innovative and sustainable digital ecosystem for building permits in Dubai. And that was a quick update. And now let's uh, enjoy the rest of the webinar when, with Engineer Bilal. So I do stop sharing. Thank you, Engineer Nora. I shared in the chat box the link if you didn't have time to scan the QR. Uh, so Anna or Bilal, you can take over, please. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Can you can you see my screen? 
Yes, we can. Yeah. Shall I start? Yes, please go ahead. Yes, okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. This is Engineer Bilal. First of all, I would like to, to thank you all. I would like to thank Dr. Ali, uh, Engineer Nora, for this opportunity which you gave me to participate in uh, UAE Building Smart uh, Live Webinars. Um, my name is Engineer Bilal. I am an architectural engineer with more than 15 years of experience by between design management and building information modeling and uh, construction management. And uh, I have a master's degree from Barcelona University in building information modeling, and I'm preparing those days my PhD in the same topic. So today I'm going to talk about something which is very important in building information modeling, which is the common data environment. And I will jump to discuss or uh, talk about how we expand BIM from office to the field. Yeah, today, uh, the con our table of contents today, it's like I'm going to go through a small introduction. Also, I have to discuss or talk about the electronic document management system uh, before I go through the CD. Also, we're going to uh, discuss about the definition of the common data environment. Uh, sorry, Engineer Bilal, but we see the presenter uh, screen. If you can just uh, make it full screen or change to. So okay, is it full you. right now? Yes. What about now? Again, we see the presenter. Just, just a minute. Just a minute. Yeah. I will stop. <laughs> Yes, Dinesh. Sorry? Sorry if it's magic, the dilemma. What about now, Doctor? Yes, great. It works now. Yeah, it's full screen, right? Okay, yes, perfect. So, uh, sorry for this small. Um, you know, uh, so uh, I will jump also to uh, some definition of the common data environment based on the ISO 19650. And the most important thing uh, we're going to talk about who is responsible of uh, creating uh, the, the CD. And I have five or four, uh, let's say, tips and tricks how to set up an effective CD. Also, I'm going to talk about the uh, initiative from Building Smart about the Open CD uh, API. Um, in fact, today's sessions, it's like as, as, as mentioned uh, earlier, it's very important because as we beam specialists and beam uh, managers and beam coordinators and uh, engineers, architects, we are struggling in, ha in how to build an effective common data environment and how to improve the collaboration between office team and field team. And actually, to get the latest information from uh, the office to the field has always been a challenge and has been always a, a problem for the constru construction industry. By experience, a number of construction projects have lost money because of lacking of the latest information. I am sure that all of you face this, this problem and lacking of the latest information and construction documents available to the field, uh, let's say responsibles, Always we face face like uh, lack of time, lack of a lot of money losing. And as you know, project communication and data sharing is usually complex. So which means that they have to be handled in very structured way. And the truth is that uncontrolled uh, emailing and file sharing between project members can quickly become chaotic and impossible to track. And actually, this is not a problem of how, where or where we're going to save or um, put our project documents or it's not a problem actually of housekeeping by the way so usually in the contract administration phases and uh, let's say in the initiation phase uh, every missing or if we missed an important piece of communication or referencing or an outdated plan for sure this will lead us to uh, a waste of time additional cost and in the worst case scenario, we're going to go to courts and can lead us to litigation. And as you know, 
and as like I mentioned, as a specialist, as as engineers, as project manager, manager, sorry, and in every or in every early project stages of of uh, from villas to very complex project, communication may be in the early stages uh, and always between small group of organizations like, let's say, the owner representative or the uh, appointing party representative and it can be between the project manager or the design and construction firm and as the progress or uh, as the project start progressing and specialist consultants join join the team the communication network becomes increasingly complex and as you know a typical large construction for short project in its peak involved communication between let's say approximately 90 organizations and over 600 individuals and imagine with me uh, this much of information exchange and it will reach millions and millions of uh, email email let's say exchange and uh, the central of those exchange are usually approvals requests for information variations and maybe um, uh, other critical decision points and if you miss one of those points for sure we're gonna face a lot of problem during the project execution so the point here or if you want to discuss about what's the solution here um, i can say that having a virtual centralized project room can solve much more of communication and data sharing so we can call this one a common data environment before i jump or discuss about the uh, cd or the common data environment let's discuss about something which called electronic document management system actually edms is a software system for organizing and storing different kinds of documents and this type of system is more particular kind of document management system a more general type of storage system that helps users uh, specialists or whatever to organize and store papers or digital documents actually uh, the electronic document management system uh, refers more specifically to software system that handles digital documents rather than paper documents although in some instance these systems may also handle digital scan as you see here we can do a lot of things like capturing or indexing or storing or retrieval or we can create also a workflow which make everything easy to us electronic or the edms for sure provides a way to centrally store a large volume of digital documents many of these systems also include features of efficiency or efficient document retrieval so what can i do with electronic document system or edms i can do a lot of lot of things like centralize or organize all documents in any formats organize exchange workflows i can even manage the entire life cycle of documents and this one it's I can say that I can go with a proper and clear and clean tracking or the history or project history tracking. I can go with also um, access uh, the documents by searching for text and this will lead us to uh, leads us to something which called the naming convention and something which called filtration in the uh, electronic document management system or in the CDs. Also, we can go through or we can find a viewer by default integrated viewer which can help us in uh, design collaboration and issue tracking in model validation and so on so we can do a lot of lot of things with with what we call the edms or electronic document management system so i can consider or from my perspective cd it's one part of the electronic document management system so the definition based on the iso 19650 part one it's uh, a great source of information for even for any given project or a set so a great source it's like uh, usually in early in every early stages of any project so all the project team members or the company team members or even the external let's say stakeholders or the people from outside if you are not agree about one source of let's say truth something i mean like the common data invite or a place where we're going to store or where we're going to communicate between each other this one it will lead to really confusing all uh, the project stakeholders and 
to be agree about one source, it's very important, and this is one one of the keys of to build up or set up uh, an effective common data environment. Uh, this one or this agreed source, it's for uh, for any given project or asset for sure for collecting, managing, and it's through what we call information containers uh, through a managed process. So the first point we have to agree, agree sorry about uh, this source or this common data environment. <laughs> We go through the BIM dictionary and uh, let's say uh, definition of the common data environment is for sure any grid source of information. But here he's mentioning very clear that uh, the CD workflow organizer for that that it contains four uh, four let's say uh, uh, four containers uh, for information container states, uh, which is which is let's say the basic or the starting point to build up. Uh, an effective common data environment. Um, I'm going to go through those uh, four uh, information container later on for sure. So CD, it's a part of, or I can call a CD or any CD in the market as I can consider it like electronic document management system. So what the key features and the benefits of CD? So as I mentioned earlier, earlier sorry, in the electronic document management system, it's we can do what we call document management. So the CD provides a centralized or like safe room for all the project uh, documents like drawings, models, contracts, reports, and so on. And we can organize it and we have to, uh, we can, let's say, get an access to, to those documents based on the permissions which we get from the information manager for sure. And for sure, uh, there is something which we call correspondence. And I am sure 100% every specialist, let's say in general, uh, we are struggling or we, we, we don't we don't prefer to send let's say emails daily and this one it will take time so the correspondence it's like uh, it's integrated in every CD so instead of sending emails like uh, please engineer John uh, find the attached drawings in the CD it can be uh, let's say automated automated by for sure by um, what we call folder permission or what we call file or folder sharing so he will get a notification through email that you send him uh, drawings or the model or the revision or so on whatever this documents is the common data environment for sure also in the common data environment we can find uh, the beam collaboration uh, by the way, those uh, key features, it um, differs from CD to another. It depends on, let's say, uh, uh, the existing features, like we can find very basic common data environment. We, 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 well, I cannot mention the name, and you can find very developed common data environment. Some common da data, data environment, you can find BIM collaboration tools like IFC Viewer, like uh, 3D Viewer or 2D Viewer, where we, you can do easily, uh, easily, sorry, the design collaboration between all uh, the design team. Uh, also, the workflow management, you can customize and uh, your workflow that reflect the way uh, they work. And this is very important that if you don't have a clear workflow from the beginning, for sure you're going to struggle during the project execution in the design for sure phase or the construction phase. Also, we can do what we call inspections and checklists. And this one, it will, or I can consider it like the link between the office and um, let's say the design team. Uh, now uh, in the market, there is a lot of, lot of, uh, and for sure because of technology, we have a lot of platforms by 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 downloading mobile app. And through your mobile app, you can create what we call inspection reports and you can create checklists. And based on those reports coming from your mobile, you can send this report or RFI or uh, or this report or this photo with uh, with to do task or uh, uh, with with let's say the two specific task to to clarify the problem or the issues you, you you face in the site by using your mobile app or by using your uh, your iPad for sure and this one we can make everything digital through what we call inspection and checklist in 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 between or under your uh, fingerprint 
So the second thing is the reporting. And uh, by the way, uh, it's 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 good every month while you're do, doing your, let's say, monthly report with the top management, it's good to show them some dashboard with uh, graphical reports. And this one, it will be this one, it, it will be generated for sure automatically from the reports or from the activities you did the whole month. And uh, also this one, it's existing from depends from uh, from the CDs to CD to another CD. So sometimes you'll find it, sometimes no, but it's all based on the workflow and on based on uh, all your needs. For sure, we have uh, we can use the common data environment during uh, what we call the building uh, operation phase and uh, in, during the handover. And uh, for sure, uh, every, let's say, like we saw last time in the workshops organized by the Bain municipality, we can check the slab and we can hand over the slab through uh, this electronic platform. It can uh, it's, it can go directly to to the city and it can be shared with the involved stakeholders. Yeah. So based on the uh, construction industry council. So uh, uh, and uh, if I can if I can look in for who is responsible for the or to manage or to create the common data environment. Uh, it's stated here in the standard that the appointed party or the appointing, sorry, party or the uh, the owner is the only responsible for uh, creating and setting up the common data environment for the whole project. So some people there uh, uh, mixing between uh, what we call the information manager and the beam coordinator and um, we should not confuse between what we call a beam coordinator and information manager because the coordinator or the beam coordinator is responsible for design and model coordination and so on. And the information manager is the only responsible or is responsible for the common data environment. The key word here is the clear path and make you have we have to make a clear strategy and structured way to manage information exchange. So before we choose or we go through any common data environment, we have to make sure that we have a clear path and we have a clear strategy. And I'm going to discuss about this one later on. And uh, for sure, if we are talking about CD, we have to discuss or for sure we have to talk about the CD or what the CD processes. So the concept of the common data environment as described in the ISO 19650 part one, uh, which is drawn from the Brit British standard uh, 1992 um, back to 2007 and PAS 1192 part two, refers principally to file sharing activities. Uh, and, uh, as I mentioned, as we saw in uh, the BIM dictionary, there is the four information information sorry container, which is shared uh, sorry, which is work in progress, shared, published, and archived. So as I as I said that uh, this includes all project documentation documentation sorry reports, plans, and models. Uh, and in this definition, the the CD is composed of as I mentioned for uh, for domains or stages. So the first one it's called uh, work in progress. The work in progress where design teams can work in the native authoring environment. And I can say the work in progress, it's like the private space or the price, private sorry place for all the project team uh, members depends on uh, the department or the, the uh, specialty, um, architectural design team, structural MEP, or so on. It's like the private place where everybody has his own uh, place to work on the project with no, uh, let's say, uh, uh, with no, with no, uh, with no. It's like confidential place for uh, for, for for the project. So the second one, it's called uh, shared or the shared folder where files or documents, models can be exchanged for review, coordination, and validation. And this place, it can be, it can be. Uh, we can give access, let's say, to the appointing party to get his feedback or to get his uh, comments on the shared. Uh, the shared, let's say, folder or the shared model. The shared model, it's like, uh, Allah, if you allow me to say this small example, it's like a small coffee table where everybody can sit at the same table and discuss further what 
the progress of the work. So um, after a lot of changes here and after the approval, it can jump here with uh, the final, let's say, revision or uh, version. And also the structural team, they can jump with the latest or uh, the approved structural, um, let's say, uh, final uh, and approved from the work in progress, I'm saying, and the MEP also they can come with or they can share the latest or the approved from the work in progress after uh, an internal quantity control, quantity assurance, after, uh, in, after an internal model validation and model, sorry, checking, they can come up with uh, the final model to share it or to put it in the shared folder, yeah. The third one, it's called published or the official place or the, the official one. Uh, for example, uh, in uh, in my CD, I can put in the published uh, folder uh, every uh, approved drawings from the municipality because it's published already. So published, it's like what officially approved documents are located, I can put here. Uh, all the NOCs, let's say, uh, because it's published from the uh, government sectors. And finally, this is the most important part in every common data environment or let's say in every uh, company or every, let's say, uh, firm, which is the archived archive where uh, supersede versions of the doc documents and models are stored. So every single document or every single, let's say, um, information related to the project, it can be it can be here or it should be here, because later on when we face problems or when we go to let's say litigation or any something related to justice or court, so this one is the problem uh, or this is this oh, i can say the, the the folder is the savior of savior savior sort of, of all all problems happen happens in happened in the project so the archive it's very very important to take care of it and it should be well organized and every single move we do during during our project uh, during the design or the construction or during, during the project, let's say, uh, operation phase, we have to keep a copy here because this is this one, it's like, um, yeah, as I mentioned, it's very important to take care of the archived uh, folder, yeah. Uh, what kind of, what types of content which we can find it in the common data environment. So we can find um, the graphical, non-graphical associated documents to the project. So um, some common data environment, as I mentioned, they have the uh, its own, let's say, integrated viewer, 2D or 3D viewer. You can see the cut drawings, you can see the models, and the models you can see it for sure uh, uh, under the IFC extension and this really uh, made uh, our life uh, easy because we are using a common language which is called IFC based on uh, under the what we call the open beam. We can find schedules, we can find specification, of course, if it's Word or Excel or PDF, we can find manuals, warranties, this we can use later on in building uh, operation phase. So the file types, like I mentioned, we can find DWG, you can find PDF, IFC for sure, Excel, Word, and so on. So the common data environment can support a lot of lot of extensions, a lot of, um, a lot of let's say file extensions, a lot of types based on uh, depends for sure from uh, CD to another one. Yeah, this is a simple uh, workflow as I mentioned. So this is the architectural. Uh, model or the architecture uh, team, they're working on in their own in the work in progress. So they have a different, let's say, tasks or different, uh, if we go with the model segregation, each, each part of the project, they're working on each part, sorry, on the project. Once it's approved, it can be one part should be shared with, with let's say, in the shared folder. And it's the same uh, process for the MEP and the structural. I can consider that you can find a multiple work in progress in uh, let's say the main working progress progress sorry folder and you can find only one shared folder and one published and for sure uh, one uh, archived folder but the working progress you can find a multiple working progress inside yeah it's very important for sure while working with uh, while using the common data environment it's very important uh, to work using the revisions and this will help us to uh, track and it help us to trace all 
the information exchange processes or uh, operations done during uh, during uh, the project um, life cycle. From the most important point in the common data environment, it's something which called the naming convention. And from the most important part, I mean, from the naming convention, something which called uh, the metadata or um, let's go in details. It's what we call the suitability. Actually, the status codes in the metadata indicates the states of the information containers in CD. So this one is to, to clarify to each member of, of the team where the information can be used and where it can cannot and furthermore uh, such as description informs about the progress of the information developer it's like we are working with a coding system so by uh, by default or uh, automatically when i see those codes i can know where uh, where what is the location of this this let's say uh, sh uh, file or or by description i can know the status of the file for sure by revision or the revision can uh, help me to uh, track and uh, find what I'm what am I right now I can go further with the comments I received from the other stakeholders uh, by the way there, there are uh, in the market as I mentioned numerous platforms available to serve uh, to serve the requirements let's say of of the CD um, for sure with a variety of levels of functionality of features and the more advanced uh, and those days for sure it's uh, the cloud based so you can find cloud based uh, cd and the same time it's server based and uh, the cloud based solutions for project wide communication and data management i think it's very good solution and um, actually all project data and members are involved from from the appointed party contractor fabricator sub consultants consultants uh, within the platform one defines specific roles and areas of activity so sharing a document does not require actually sending a file so as i mentioned before does not require sending open your email and sending email and writing uh, let's say the comment or the task it's only uh, it's instead of of sending email or sending a documents uh, it's all about giving access or uh, the access the access rights to the project number so that they can retrieve it or you can even track the activity after sending or sharing this uh, let's say uh, document um, yeah extending by the way uh, the concept further of the common data environment so um, if i can consider that um, one project member can create a workflow that direct specific transaction and approval sequences and um, for example an architect if i go with this one if an architect may upload a model into a model coordination workflow, the project beam manager is notified and has a time frame to review it and comment on the model. So everything here in the common data environment, especially in uh, the cloud-based and more advanced common data environment, everything is traceable and you can you can track it. You can create, let's say, a monthly report about all the activities related to uh what's ha what have been done in the project during its life cycle yeah with the new let's say with the new common data environment or there is some features existing in some common data environment where you can link easily um, the field or the uh, let's say the construction site members with the design team by as I mentioned, simple. You can download, uh, let's say, an application in your phone or in your in your uh, iPad, and you can coordinate easily uh, with your team or the design team for sure, based on a clear and proper workflow. So within this workflow setup, uh, uh, one can define the duration of the various approval stages. This enables powerful notifica notification, sorry, and and uh, reporting. So once a file has been uploaded into workflow, the first respondent is notified via email. So this is very, uh, very useful. So you you'll be notified the whole time, let's say, during the project life cycle. So if they have not completed their approval within, within let's say, uh, a given time, they are sent a reminder. So once uh, it's completed, for sure, you will receive another reminder and the next recipient is notified and commence review and 
so on and start approve it and send it back and uh, in this in this in this case you'll get you know, or you keep you keep you'll, you'll keep uh, uh, getting notification from all the project team members so I will give you a small example like if a project manager or uh, may wish to see how many workshop drawings are currently in on approval processes in doing so they may be made aware that the approval workflow let's say uh, which should take 15 days so it's taking 22 days so they can take and drill down to see that it's the HVAC contractor who is taking an average 13 days to review drawings with a proper or clean workflow you can make everything under control so uh, for sure you're going to use what we call uh, IFC and it's all uh, based on your uh, communication using BCF and if your workflow is clear and clean and proper and very straightforward you will be uh, let's say you'll make your life easy during the project life cycle in the design stage construction uh, phase uh, I mean or even the building operation phase. So from the key points or uh, let's say uh, from uh, if you want to build up or create uh, an effective common data environment, um, the first point you have to choose the right platform. So make sure about your uh, your needs. So before you start uh, or before you buy or before you set up your common data environment, you have to make sure about your needs. I mean, you have to check your project. So uh, before you go or uh, before you go through, let's say, an expensive common data environment, you have to think about: Do I need? all the features existing in this uh, common data environment right now or no. So uh, if it's not the case, um, so no need to go with uh, an expensive common data environment. So keep yourself, I mean, you have to go only with your needs. So make uh, make sure that uh, your goals, it's clear or your uh, uses, it's clear. So this one, it to lead you to choose the right platform. So one more point, you have to make sure that everybody is aware about this platform by uh, training, by giving them courses, because if your team, they are not aware about uh, the new features in, uh, I mean, the team engineers, site engineers, even foremen, if they are not aware about this common data environment, um, you will suffer with them. So you have to give courses from the beginning and you have to make like internal memo about it and to make it officially uh, official. I mean, uh, like, like like this one, it's the official common data environment for our company. Yeah. The second point is working with, uh, you have to make clear organization chart with clear, for, clear sorry for the permissions. Actually working with permission, it's very important. This this one, it's like you are giving keys, you have, you have a limited keys, so you have to ch choose the right person uh, who's gonna, to whom you're gonna give this key. So this one will help you to track every project information exchange. So you can assign responsibilities. So you know very well after signing or after giving folder permissions, and you will be able to share the right info with the right person on the right time, for sure. Uh, using the right platform after you, uh, you, of course, after, after you make sure about your uh, goals and. Uh, uses yeah the third point it's the naming convention and the metadata as more as and more information is shared digitally the use of structured and consistent and understandable naming convention for information becomes for sure vital so uh, the naming convention it's very very important in every common data environment so because with the naming convention it's easily for you to track and do what we call filtration and you can pick up every or any single folder or file from between or from thousands and thousands of files since years back so uh, it's very important to go through clear naming convention convention sorry for sure based on the iso 19650 so this naming convention you can uh, there is a lot of benefits from this one so uh, we cannot we cannot discuss any let's say uh, fast about this one so we have to um, uh, 
make a special webinar about only the naming convention because there is a lot of lot of things to 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 discuss about it and basically if you want to make uh, an effective common data environment you have to make sure about the naming convention i have to to follow and respect what what's mentioned in the standards and the iso for sure the fourth the fourth point and the fourth key let's say it's uh, make it simple make it simple as much as possible because uh, if you create a simple or simple sorry folder structure this will make all the team members more active and more involved because as much you complicate the life of other people your project will be more and more and more complicated so let's go or um, I suggest to go with very simple for the folder, sorry, structure, and this to avoid any complication during your workflow. And you can add other folders slowly, slowly, uh, while while your project, let's say, progresses. And for sure, there is one point which is very important. Um, you have to keep always with you something which we call lessons, lessons sorry, learned uh, log or uh, lessons learned register. It's like the folder structure you've created for the project X. For sure, you're gonna uh, develop it, and it's it not will be the same for the project Y or or Z. So every time in, in, in any project or the whole, I mean, uh, the, I mean the, the best way to uh, create or make a uh, success common data environment it's to create cre to create simple folder structure yeah there is another point which is uh, create a project template so with with this process and if you are working with templates um, this you're going to save a lot of time if you create a clear or uh, I'm let's say a company template with the same folder structure with the same project team member except the new people who's coming or be involved in the project so creating a project template this one it will help you to uh, set up um, an effective CD for sure initiative sorry from uh, which is that this is one of the last point which is an open common data environment with uh, an application programming interface so this would would me make it possible to create a user software that can interact with multiple cds so from a common user interface imagine with me one common data environment or one uh, let's say end user software we can uh, this whole avoid the pain of learning, uh, let's say, new methods of each CD on where setting are stored and how permissions are managed. Uh, so no need to go uh, with each CD and learn every time something in you. Uh, this uh, initiative, it's very important to make one CD and make it like an open CD where everybody can work in the same platform. And um, yeah, this is this is uh, very uh, powerful initiative from Building Smart, and um, yeah, that's it. Thank you uh, very much, Dr. Ali, and uh, thank you everybody for uh, listening. I hope that I didn't uh, talk too much <laughs> during this webinar. And if you have any question, please don't hesitate to ask me. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much for the very interesting presentation, Engineer Bilal. I enjoyed it so much. Uh, Anna, would you like maybe to moderate the questions uh, session? Mm. Hi, thank good you. morning. I think like uh, before, if anyone has a question, can you please uh, write it in the text box in the meeting chat? So Engineer Bilal can uh, reply to them. Or maybe by raising hand also, if you would like to go on the mic, so if you prefer to say the question. Uh, let me start maybe by the questions. Uh, how you think, Engineer Bilal, uh, that the common data environment will evolve and develop in the future? And the second uh, question, do you think that we need common data environment even for a very small project like a Vela or, or something not that big? 
Yeah, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Ali, for the two questions. The first question is how I see uh, the common data environment in the future. As I mentioned in, in the presentation that uh, with this initiative of building SMART, uh, which is CD API, that this one, it will help a lot of, lot of professionals and will not uh, struggle anymore about uh, something what we call common data event. So if we are working in a multiple common data environment with this initiative, it will make life easy to us. So uh, the common data environment now, uh, everybody is working from his own and we are, lot, we are not, let's say, linked together. So uh, this causes caused a lot of problems between all the specialists or all the firms. So if we go with OpenCD, this will make everything easy to us. But for uh, if we need a common data environment for small projects like villas or for, uh, let's say, uh, warehouse, yeah. Because actually in the market, there is uh, a cloud-based, let's say, platforms. We can use it as a common data environment. So it's very, very basic. Uh, and it should be start like this because if we don't care about the small project uh, and we, ca we care only about the big project, this one, it will create something like, um, I mean, we have to take care of about all the project scales from the small to the big one. But it depends on the common data environment we choose for uh, this villa. So it's existing, there is a common data environment or let's say a platform which we can use it as a common data environment and it will be uh, much with the small project, which is the villa. Yeah, my, my, my answer, yes. We need the common data environment for a villa, yeah. It's just, let's say, villa or mosque or whatever, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Engineer Hadim, I see that you raised your hand. Please go ahead. Yes, hi, good afternoon. Um, I have a question in regards. I don't know if you are aware about. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm from building permit department, and we have we have something going on like um, we're. I don't know if you you're aware about our work in in, in building permits. We are um, we are processing with issuing building permits. So all all the information about the the project is submitted to here, and we are issuing the building permit. Basically, our, my question is. Is this common data environment can be used in our system? I mean, here we are having since we are using we are, we are having the initiation of using BIM, so this can be helpful because we are here in in, in building permit system because here we are having the model we are asking for, or let's say for now we are asking them to submit their drawings here in the municipality. We are uh, we are sharing the information. There is an exchange of information between us and the consultants consultation firms. There is a process. Of of versioning and there's a process of uh, naming convention. I don't know to which extent this common data environment that is used in consultation companies for sharing information and collaboration can be used between us as an authority and uh, a consultation firm. Do you think this can be done or this can be beneficial for the use here uh, with uh, in, in uh, with us as a government? Yeah, you want me to Thank answer you. Dr. Ali or most welcome, Engineer Hadil? Okay, you, you can tell your person. Yeah, because answer. actually uh, I have a few ideas about uh, the government platform, but uh, with this uh, Building Smart Initiative, it can be in the future, yeah. I don't know exactly, but it's better it's better to work all in the same or under in under one umbrella, by the way. What do you mean by under one umbrella? I mean uh, all in one CD. Yeah, which can be uh, stored here in, in Dubai uh, municipality, let's say. So the common data environment will be here and will... Uh... Uh, let me give you an example. You know, the OneDrive, the OneDrive, you can consider it as common data environment. You know, mm -hmm. the OneDrive, the Google Drive. So exactly, I don't know what you mean by here in government, in, in Dubai municipality government, because I'm not uh, aware 100 percent about. Yeah, yeah. but uh, the common bar, in, sorry, the common data environment, it can be one drive and it can be, I cannot mention the name, another very, very develop, developed common data environment, which is cloud based. So mm. it's based on your workflow and the process you are you are doing or you created to 
uh, because the common data environment it's basically um, as I mentioned it's composed of four information container which is work in progress shared published and archived this one it's just an indication to create a common data environment we are not robots it's not necessary to follow work in progress publish shared no you can do a lot of let's say a folder structure but the starting point it was the work in progress shared and in this it can be in one drive let's say just an example okay but to me to be to be honest with you, I'm not sure about um, the government platform because I'm not aware 100%, but it can be. Yeah, because know, our, our work is, is similar to, to what you're describing. We have yeah. the models or the drawings submitted to the by municipality. We yeah. are storing the documents and the versioning of the documents. We are coordinating with the consultation firm and where there's specific standards that they have to use to submit to us and to 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 communicate with us so it's so it's very similar to what is happening inside uh, any in consultation case, firm in this case you can i can consider it like cd i don't know maybe dr ali has another exactly as yeah. what i wanted to add actually actually what we are developing our pim platform or pim e submission platform or even without pim the e submission platform in dubai municipality or any other municipality is a is a common data environment with focus on a specific use case so we as you know we are storing the pim model we have name convention we have pim collaboration format support so we can consider what engineer bilal described today is a wider uh, use cases for common data environment for the design stage and for uh, uh, having all the stakeholders of the project so so we are going on the same direction let me just allow me uh, engineer bilal uh, i don't know maybe you mentioned the common data environment api initiative from building smart um, personally i don't think that they are trying to to have uh, like only that in the future though that we will have only one com common data environment but this initiative is more trying to solve the problem how to solve the communication and data exchange between different common data environment which are existing on the market. And in the future, I see also that if we consider the e-submission platform in Dubai municipality as a common data environment, that in the future we can develop based on the common data environment API, a way that we can pull and sit and, and send information to other common data environment uh, of uh, the client uh, in an automated way. Do we have further questions? We still have, I don't think, I think we still have a few minutes if anybody would like uh, to to go on the mic or to to add some comment or feedback. I see James has a uh, presentation too. Uh, so James, uh, uh, asking uh, if uh, you or anyone have any concern around cloud-based CDEs. So maybe he means here data security. What do you think about data security? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. James, uh, about your question. Um, uh, the common data you, environment which I'm used, it's uh, secured. I don't know if this is the question, but uh, if we go with the cyber security is secured and uh, all uh, the common data environment developers that are working to secure because you know if you go through the, yeah if you go through the security uh, of course in this common data environment you're going to store like uh, just an example checks contracts and so on and it's very important to put in in safe place but I believe the existing uh, common data environment now in the market, it's all secured. It's all secured, yeah. So um, I don't know anyone uh, nearby is, he has concerns about, yeah. Yeah, most welcome, Mr. James. I have a question. Do you believe that that appointing party really should be responsible for setting up the common data environment? Because appointing party, as I understand it from the ISO, is the client, maybe the owner or of the building. So do you believe this is a, a good idea or maybe they mean here that he should assign some person to manage the information? So why yeah. why you believe that the ISO uh, asked the appointing party to be responsible for the establishment of the common data environment? 
Yeah, uh, for the point, thank you so much. Very, very, very good question, Dr. Ali. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, as a appointing party, we have to we have to know that there is a multiple appointing parties. Like, uh, let's say, a developer is owner. RTA, it's an owner. Okay, not like a single appointing party. So a single appointing party, like a villa owner, for sure, he will not create a community environment. He will not be responsible for community. Maybe he will assign somebody, or usually for the small projects like, <clears throat> sorry, villas, uh, the owner representative, it's most of the time, is the, the consultant. But if we go uh, with a bigger and bigger owner, like developer, like um, assets owners, this one, maybe he will assign somebody <clears throat> who will be responsible or the information exchange or accommodate the environment or he can uh, hire directly somebody who create it. So because, you know, as much we go uh, with uh, the size of the owner, the, the informations are because the owner is the responsible, the, uh, the responsible of, I mean, uh, he has all the rights about the building or the information um, uh, related to the project. So he has to secure, sorry, or protect those informations by creating a CD or assign somebody who's going to take care of those uh, informations. But if I go with, uh, let's say, an owner of a villa, for sure it's not necessary for him to go with a common data environment. And if I go with owner like RTA or let's say Dubai municipality, for sure they need to uh, set up the common data environment. But in general, the owner, yes, is the responsible of the CD. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. In the, the, Georgie, he said, yeah, uh, larger projects, yeah, in the owner is the master developer, then they should create CD. Yeah, yeah. It depends on the owner size. It depends on the owner size, yeah. Yes. Uh, please, Mr. Georgi, I see that you raised your hand. Go ahead. Good. Good morning or good afternoon. It's it's about noon. Never mind. Uh, continuing on the on who should create the CD. We had we had cases on on uh, relatively smaller projects uh, where where the owners were insisting on a type of the of the CD, but we as as the consultants were expected to create it for on their behalf. We also had the projects where the where the project management uh, project manager consultant was was creating the CD on behalf of the client, as I wrote in the in in the, in the comments. I agree if if uh, the 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 developer or the owner is somebody like Nakilamar or RTA or or the Dubai municipality, they should have. But my, my question is actually, uh, who do you think is the is the most uh, uh, capable of creating a common data environment? For the smaller projects, I presume those are the consultants if they are if they are being enabled. Yeah. Yes. Um, actually, uh, what we call those days the information manager who should be the responsible to create the common data environment. But some, in some cases, or in some projects, it's not necessary to hire a beam manager, a beam coordinator, information manager, a senior architect, a project manager in the same time. So. The project manager, it can be information manager, by the way, in some projects, in some cases. Or the beam manager, it can be information manager in, in some in some cases, only some projects. So who's going to create uh, the common data environment? Uh, actually, based on, on the standard, it's the information manager who's going to be responsible on it. But from my perspective, Every time we create, let's say, or uh, uh, create, um, let's say, 
a folder structure, just an example in the camel data environment, we have to make a meeting. This meeting or the purpose of this meeting, it's like to show the people, uh, let's go everybody, we are trying to build up our common data environment, what you suggest. It's something similar, I'm not saying it's the same, but similar what we call, we are working with sprints. Once we finish the structure of the common data environment, it's like we are doing, uh, we'll reach the point that with no comments, but the responsible or who's going to create the common data environment, I believe it's a teamwork. It's a teamwork. And of course, with the lead of, of, of the information manager or the BIM manager or the project manager. But I suggest to make like workshops um, under principle of sprints, sprints, I mean, Agile and so on in the project management. And every time we finish a stage or create a part, we have to discuss between each other and find out what's the problem. Is it clear? Is it OK? Is it simple? It's not complicated, right? So let's jump to the next step. So it's go with creating a folder structure. Then we go to the, the, the adding team, project team members. Then we go with the permissions. Then we go with um, create uh, a naming convention template with automation system inside your platform and so on. And those phases or those sprints, it should be done, uh, let's say, uh, every time we finish, let's say, phase, we have to create a workshop. But I believe uh, most of the time it's a teamwork. But later on, uh, the information manager or um, beam manager or project manager who's going to be responsible on the CD. I don't know, Mr. Uh, Juris, if I answered your question, but. Yes, you did quite nicely. Thank you very much. Most welcome, sir. Let us take the last two question. I see that Mr. Ahmad Jamal raised right hand. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for this, uh, for this session and I appreciate all your information. I'm actually from the contracting field. I would appreciate if you can elaborate, elaborate further regarding the uh, structure, the aqua and portfolio management. If we are, I think we are discussing about one project level, but if we have uh, programs or portfolio, uh, how, how this really uh, PRM will help to get uh, all linked together and all the process of the company? Going in the world, in the world, like a procurement, like budget, project, like Google, like uh, variation orders, like all these things. Uh, and thank you. This is the this is the question. I, I didn't hear Dr. Ali exactly. Yeah, the, 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 the voice quality was very bad, but I think he was asking about the contract, uh, the contracting point of view for common data environment. <laughs> If yeah. any problem happened, who will take the responsibility? Uh, Ahmed, if you can just confirm that this was your question, or if you can uh, uh, yeah, try yeah. To, to get the mic yeah. closer to you. Uh, yeah. uh, I'm asking also about the level of the, uh, of the management. We are speaking about the project, one project. If we have uh, more than one project, uh, like a portfolio management, program management, how how we can, how we can, how the EIM will help to get uh, better management, better decision making for uh, for the, this type of the level of the projects, for managing uh, projects, a lot of projects. Thank you. Uh, can is it sound clear now? Hello. Did you get the question, Bilal? Yes, uh, he, uh, Mr. Jamal, uh, Dr. Ahmed, uh, sorry, Engineer Ahmed. Yeah. Uh, your question was how BIM can protect, I mean, how yeah. we can use building information modeling as a process and tool to uh, protect the rights, the contract. <laughs> Well, I uh, prefer maybe if you can send the question written because I written, understand yeah, yeah. again something else. I, I thought you were talking this time yeah. about if you have portfolio of a project, not only one project, how this will affect. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. the question is not that clear. 
so, so uh, I don't know, Bilal, if you, if you have different project, not only one project will make, make uh, any any difference, or actually the common data environment is mean to manage different project on some same place. Yeah, uh, actually, um, the, I will give you an example because I have my own common data environment. Um, I'm um, I'm managing a different project with different scales in one common data environment. So the difference, it will come in, or you can see the difference in uh, the project template because a template of a building, it's not the same of a hospital or school or university. For sure, uh, the team or the, invo or the project team members, they will not be the same. Maybe uh, some, you know, uh, you will find the same architect in, in three projects, but you will not find it in another projects. Uh, but as a process, it's the same. As a process, it's the same. Uh, like the naming convention, it should be the same. Uh, the workflow, it should be the same. The permissions, I mean, the permissions or folder permissions strategy, it should be the same. And uh, I want to, to say something about uh, how you can protect yourself or protect the contract or the project con contract using the common data environment. Some common data environment existing in the market where you can easily open um, a PDF or Excel or Word file. And in case, let's say, person A has a comments uh, on, on the contract, he can simply, before we go to the electronic signature, okay, in the shared or, yeah, in the shared, uh, there is a lot of features, what we call, um, it's similar to the BCF, okay? It's similar to the building collaborative uh, collaboration format. So you can create a, a comment on the contract or the electronic, sorry, copy of the contract inside the CD, and you can assign the person to do the task or to make the revision, and you can at the same time send a notification to all the stakeholders. So in this case, or in this small case study, you'll see that you already create a comment and you send it to the responsible party and at the same time unified all the stakeholders. This, uh, let's say, it's another way of how you protect your rights in in in, uh, in during the project life cycle using the common data environment. Uh, Do you but expect I, in the future that we may see blockchain application regarding smart contract and uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we ha we actually I uh, I don't want to mention any names, but last week we had the same. Uh, we had a meeting with one client or one company, uh, and we're gonna go through this. Uh, you oh, know. great, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I think we are over the time. Uh, I yes. don't know. Uh, we have to conclude the webinar. So many thanks to all people who prepared for the invitation of the webinar for Anna, uh, for Engineer Nora, and the special thank to Engineer Bilal for the very interesting uh, webinar. If somebody is attending for the first time and you wish to get invitation in the future, so please write your email in the chat. So we'll be sure to send you invitation. And if somebody is also interested to be a speaker in our future webinars, also contact uh, uh, Miss Anna, or just write your email and uh, or go to the Building Smart website where you can also register your interest and share with us the topic you would like to talk about. We will be more uh, than glad to support you and to uh, give you the stage to share with us interesting ideas, interesting project like today. Uh, so if nobody have any further uh, final word or comment, I thank you all again to join us today and hope to see you in the next uh, future webinar soon. Thank you so much, Dr. Ali, and thank you so much to the municipality team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Salam alaikum.